Sunday School Lesson for April 19, 2015. Lesson 8, Unit 2, The Community of Beloved Disciples. Our lesson title is Beloved Child. Our devotional reading is taken from the book of Romans, the 8th chapter, verses 31 through 39. Our background scripture is from 1 John chapter 4 through chapter 5. And our printed text is 1 John chapter 4 verses 13 through 21 and chapter 5 verses 1 through 5. And our key verse, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone that loveth him that begot love of him also that is begotten of him. First John five one. Our lesson aim as a result of studying this lesson that the students should be able to comprehend what is required to live with unity in the Christian community. Talk about experiences of love within the community that exemplifies faith and love in God and celebrate the community contributions to their formation as disciples of Jesus Christ. Beloved child. First John is a family letter written from the father to his little children who are in the world. First John is in two principal divisions, the family with the father and the family and the world. In our lesson, we have the children assured that they are beloved, reaffirming through the apostle John that they are beloved by the father. God is love and his children should and will love each other. So we find written in verse 13 of our lesson where it states, Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. Hereby we know that we dwell in him, that the Holy Spirit dwells in every believe Romans 8 9 states but ye are not in the flesh but in the spirit if so be that the spirit of God dwells in you now if any man have not the spirit of Christ he is none of his and we also find in 1 Corinthians six nineteen, where it says that what know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you? So every believer, every true believer is indwelt by the Holy Spirit. That, that the very presence, the very Spirit of God lives within us as believers. So we, we need to be mindful knowing that, that the Spirit of God dwells in us. And that we are sealed with the Spirit until the day of redemption. And we find in verse 14 where it says, And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Here the Apostle John is giving a personal testimony where he said that we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Here John proclaimed the fundamental truth of the gospel, the fundamental truth of the Christian faith, that the Lord Jesus relations to God is that he is the only begotten son of the father. He is not a son. He is the only begotten son of the father. And his relationship and office towards us that he is our savior. He saves us from the penalty of death 
in eternal damnation by his death, his example, and his intercessions, and that and, and, and that how that he keeps us and delivers a, a, from the powers who, who are the enemies of our salvation. We do not keep ourselves that we are kept by the power of God and that the Lord Jesus, now that he intercedes on behalf of all believers so that so that we will have victory in this life. And also that John states that the Father sent the Son. That it, it was the Father's will that the Son came into the world for one purpose. And that was to save mankind. We find written in John three sixteen and 17 where it says, For God so loved the world for, that he sent his only begotten Son into the world. And that, and that whoever should believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. This was Jesus Christ's mission that he was sent by the Father to, to be the Savior of all mankind. We find in verse 15 where it says, Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him and he in God. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God. Now we have to understand that this confession is not just with our mouth, but it is with our life. This confession includes faith, in the heart as the foundation of it and profession that our life and our conduct should speak what we claim with our mouth. That that our behavior, that our life, not just saying that we believe on the Lord, but our life should, should show that we believe on the Lord. And it says also that no believer can deny the deity of Jesus Christ. You have so many cults, Jehovah Witnesses and all these other cults saying that 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 Jesus, that he was not God manifested in the flesh, but Jesus Christ was very God manifested in the flesh. And so no believer can truly believe it, where the Spirit of God that dwells in him can deny that Jesus is very God in the flesh. So he who truly confesses Christ is indwelt and empowered by the Spirit of God. We find in 1 Corinthians 12 and 3 where it says, Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaketh by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a curse, and that no man can say Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. So, so the Spirit cannot deny the Son. Listen to what people say about Jesus Christ. That he was just a good man. That he was just a prophet. That he was a son of God. No, those are false religions. Jesus Christ is very God manifested. In the flesh. Jesus said, when you see me, ye have seen the Father. So we cannot deny the deity of Jesus Christ. We find written in verse 16 of our lesson where it states, And we know and believe the love that God has to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God. In God in him. And we have known and believed God is love. Love is the supreme test. Love is the proof of what is all about. And God has manifested his love for us 
through the life and the sacrifice of his son, Jesus Christ, for us. Romans 5 a said, but God commended, that is, that God demonstrated his love towards us in that while we was yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we was yet sinners, unworthy of God's love, but God showed his love by having his son to die, to give his sinless life for a sinful world on a cruel altar of a cross that he that his blood would be shed for the remission for the for the forgiveness of our sin and the only reason God did this is not because he had to but because God is love and he loved us God's love is boundless love that there, there, there is no limit to it he has incomparable and incomprehensible love. For us. We cannot even understand it. His love for mankind, and, and it was demonstrated in the mission that his son came and took on our behalf. And then even now, as a mediator, his son mediates for us, for there is one mediator between God and man. That is the man, Jesus Christ. So Jesus stands in the gap trying to make peace between a holy God and sinful mankind. And the proof of this, and the proof uh, that God is in us, if we say that we are in him, that proof is that we Love also. We find written in John the 13th chapter verses 34 through 35 says that many will say, well, I'm a Christian, I'm a disciple of Christ. But the but how would the world know? By, by our attire, by the congregations that we go to, by us wearing big symbols and we got bumper stickers on our cars? No, but it is by the manifestation of, of their life and our everyday conduct. John 13, 34 and 35 says, a, com a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved ye, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if you have love one to another. So the proof of who we claim we are, or who we say we are, or who child we claim to be, is that we have love towards one another. You can fix your mouth to say anything, but action speaks louder than words. We find in verse 17 of our lesson, it says, Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in the world. Herein is our love made perfect. That is, we say, I, I love for God. That our love for God grows more and more. The more we learn, the more we realize about God, just how merciful, just how long-suffering, just how good he has been to us who are undeserving of this type of love, that our love grows more and more. And, and, and it fills us with complete confidence for the day when he should judge all men. And the reason why that we are filled with more confidence because Christ Jesus took our judgment on Calvary. If, if we would identify with the Lord Jesus Christ as, as being our propitiation, that, that he was the satisfaction not for his sins but for our sins on Calvary, then, then we have nothing to fear 
for at the day of judgment. Romans 8, 33 and 34 says, Who shall lay anything to the charge of God elect? It is God that justified. Who is he that condemned? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God who also make intercessions for us. So then that we do not have to fear it. As a beloved child of God, we do not have to fear it, the judgment seat, the great white throne. The only thing as, as Christians that we have to stand before the beamer seat of Christ, not for salvation, but, but for our service, for our works as Christians on Christ's behalf. But not for condemnation, but for our faithfulness as servants of God. Verse 18 tells us, it says that there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear had torment. He that feared is not made perfect in love. There is no fear in love. This perfect love is Christ. Christ is the manifestation of perfect love. Christ showed the world that he loved the Father by being obedient even unto the death of the cross. He said that the world might know I love the Father, let us go. That the world might know that he loved the Father. He said, Father, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will might be done. And so, and so now, with this type of love, he removes fear from the saved sinner's heart. We do not have to fear no more of a vengeful God. But Christ Jesus puts that love in our heart, letting us know that we are beloved ones, that, that, that the God of the universe has become not only our creator, but he became our loving father. Say, for as many as Believe upon him. Believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ. To them gave him power to become the children of God. That now that we are in the family of a loving and omnipotent, all-powerful and all-knowing Heavenly Father. And, and his love for us, the more that we learn about his love for us, should give us the testimony of belonging to the family of God. Romans 8, 15 and 16 says, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. That's just like saying, Daddy. Daddy, Father. The Spirit bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Perfect love casts out fear. The Spirit bear witness with our spirit. We don't have to wonder or guess or hope, but the Holy Spirit would testify to us that we are the children of God. We find in verse 19 of our lesson states, we love him because he first loved us. Because he first loved us. His love for us should be the incentive and the motive and the reason why we do the things that we do. Just thinking about God's faithfulness, his mercy, his grace, 
makes us want to serve him. We we should want to be pleasing to him in in all things. We cannot but love such a a good guy who was first in the act and the work of love towards us. He loved us when even we didn't love ourselves. He loved us when we was both unloving and unlovely. But God, because of his great love, man cannot comprehend how much that that God made man, that, that his love for man is. He created all things, not for himself, but he created all things so that he can bestow his love upon feeble man. But yet, we take it for granted. But see, but we should love him. We should love him, not because of what we can get from him, but because of what he's already done. Just think about, look back over your life and then realize just how good and merciful that the Lord has been. And because of this, not because of what he will do, but because of what he's already done, our love should be overflowing towards him. We find in verse 21, 20 and 21 where it states if a man say I love God and hateth his brother he is a liar for he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen how can he love God whom he hath not seen and this commandment have we from him that he who loveth God loveth his brother also if a man say, I love God. If a man or a woman profess to say, I love God, that I'm a lover of his name, that I'm a lover of his house, and, and I worship his very presence, and yet hate his brother, whom he should love, for God say, the Bible say that that you are a liar. He is a liar. For how can you how can you love God whom you have not seen when you hate your brother that you see every day? One that is made in the image and in the very likeness of God Himself. Jesus said in John fifteen twelve, This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Jesus loved us even when we turned our backs on him. Even when his disciples ran off and abandoned him in his hour of distress and need. Even as he was dying on the cross for, for the sins of mankind, and the very ones that he was dying was standing there mocking him and laughing him to shame. Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. So, so this is the type of love that God wants us to have towards one another. And this is the type of love that we cannot of ourselves have, but it only flows through the spirit of God is that we love one another. So if we say we love God, then we're supposed to love our brothers. And then if we don't have that love, the Bible says we, we are alive. We find in the fifth chapter of, of John, where it states, First John, where it states, Whosoever believe that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him, that begat, loveth him, that is also begotten of him. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ. Faith produces the new birth. You do not clean yourself up. It is by faith. With faith in Jesus Christ when a man becomes born again. And the one who is born again will love others 
who are born again. These can no be confined. This type of love cannot be confined to a certain denomination, a church, a race, a clique. But we are supposed to be love each other, not be partiality, show partiality in our love, but, but we supposed to love the family of God. And so if we say that we love God, then we're supposed to love God's children who really are our brothers and sisters in Christ. We find in verse 2, it says, By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. The proof is that is that we love God and keep his commandments. When we love God and keep his commandments, we love other believers because that is one of his commandments. These commandments we're talking about do not refer to the Old Testament commandments, the Old Testament law, but to the commandment of Jesus Christ. Jesus brought the the law of love. Love the Lord God with all thy heart, soul, and thy mind, and love thy neighbor as thyself. And if we do these, then we will fulfill all those things that was written in the Old Testament. So Christ's law is the law of love. We find in verse 3, it says, For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. His commandments are not grievous or burdensome. Does not mean that they are difficult to keep. His commandments is not difficult to keep, but, but rather that they do not impose a burden when they are kept. During the will of God is not a burden. Because really the power, the exodus here, the power, it is not of ourselves, but it, it is of God. Jesus said, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That, that if we would just be submissive and yielding to him, he would do all the heavy lifting. But we just have to have a willing and obedient heart and spirit. Verse 4 says, it, For whosoever is born of God overcome the world. And this is the victory that overcome the world, even our faith. This is the victory that overcome the world. You know, we cannot overcome the world power by fighting it. By by fighting Satan and, and, and his influence uh, uh, upon the world. But the, but the way that we can defeat it, the way that we can have victory is through what? It depends upon our faith. Faith gives us the victory. And that faith is, is, is complete reliance and trust and dependence upon God. Not just to say that that we believe that there is a God, for even the demons believe and tremble, but faith is us putting our whole weight upon God and trusting Him to for all phases of our life. Might not understand it, but 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 trusting a loving God, a God who is love and that he loved us so that that he has our well being at heart. And that regardless of the situation, that all things work together for good to them that love God and that are called according to his purpose. Not just the good things 
but it says all things. And so we have to have faith to trust a loving father who loved us so much that he gave heaven best for us. And verse 5 says, Who is he that overcome the world? He that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. He that believeth, he that trusted that Jesus is the Son of God. That Jesus, the only begotten of the Father. That Jesus Christ came and that he died for our sin and that he was raised for our justification and that Jesus, that he paid the penalty, he delivered us from the penalty of sin and that now, today, that he is delivering us from the habit and the power of sin in our everyday life and then that one day, that Jesus was going to come back and deliver us from the very presence of sin. He said, ye believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. And he said, and I go away to prepare a place for you. And if I go away, I will come back again and receive you unto myself, that there where I am, ye may be also. And so, finally, one day, he going to take us out of the very presence of this old sinful world. And so, our faith in Christ overcomes this old world. We will be delivered one day from this heartaches and, and pains, from this sickness and the hatred and the injustices of this world we will be in the very presence of God why because we are beloved ones may God bless you and keep you